when I was 14 years old and I came to church with his cousin. It was a very hot day and he had a big puffer jacket on and a massive afro and he was sweating and he was just really rude and I didn't like him at all. So um, yeah, I met him, how many years ago was that? Se 17 years ago? Yeah. But yeah, I didn't like him at all, at all. <laughs> he was just this horrible, rude person who didn't know how to dress for the weather. Mm. Typically, when you're in church, you should be listening to the sermon. That didn't happen. All the youth kind of gathered in this one room and started prank calling people. And I had a contract and he had pay as you go. So he was like, give me your phone, give me your phone, let me use your phone. He was just really rude. Um, and especially for someone that I didn't know, he just irked me and irritated me. There was no respect. Even at 14, I thought, he, who's his mother? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> But yeah, that was my first impression. Okay, uh, so when I so I had spoken to her by accident, I picked up my cousin's phone, and it was her on the phone, um, and I was like, "Rah, her voice is husky, sexy." It's like, "Rah." Anyway, that was done. I spoke to my cousin, and I said, "Oh, you need to show me this girl. I need to hear. Her. I need to see her. I need to see her." I think a month later, she came to the church, and <clears throat> I didn't get a heads up though. That's why I was in this like man's not hot outfit. It was it was ridiculous. No one put me up on the game, do you understand? Uh, so when I did see her, I was like, oh my days. She looked good. Um, but as I said, I was, as she said, yeah, I was rude. Um, but that was just my nature. I was just reverting back to banter. That's what I'm like. I'm <laughs> I, thought, I just wanted to do some jokes. And it uh, didn't really go down well for the first, first time. I don't even remember our first date. Nor do I. I, I, have, I cannot remember that for the life um, of me. I mean, did we date when we was 14? No. I come from a very strict background, so there was no dating. I think I only told my mum about Adrian two years after we were with each other. So she found out when I was 16. Yeah. But I remember that the only time that I remember just us going out is going to Peckham Plex. Yeah. And Cinema going to like, a motor. watch a movie. Yeah. And back then it was 2 99 So me as a 15, 16, 17, hey. <laughs> that was the motive. Get any popcorn you want. Mix and blend, drink. We can go at D's after with a token. <laughs> I, it was a vibe. Um, but yeah. I don't remember how the date went. I don't. No. <laughs> I was only allowed out of the house for, to his cousin's house. So the only time that we, I would see him is at church or his cousin's house. So it wasn't, there was never anything formal when we were younger at all. I couldn't tell you how old I was. But I know the first time I said I love you to her, we said it at the same time mm. and it wasn't planned. We're on the phone and literally, it was literally like, it just, it was chemistry. It sounds cliche, but we said it at the same time. And it was like, oh, okay, I'm in this. Okay, cool. Well, that wasn't my intention. It wasn't my intention. I thought I could have her here. She lived in a different area than me. So I thought, <laughs> you sorry, thought babe, what? Sorry. <laughs> you thought what, sorry? I thought I'd have you here. <laughs> Do you know, I didn't expect to be having a lifetime with you at the moment. So, you know, but Did we that thank, ever happen or? We, 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 we thank <laughs> God, didn't it? <laughs> so I became a Christian when I, when I was 21. And when I became a Christian, I said, you know what? I'm going on this route now, so we've got to break up. It was against what I believed in. She didn't take too kindly to that. So she actually came. I had been inviting her to church for a while. Tara came along to church to see if I was with anyone Yeah, because let's keep it candid. So he's giving you the PG version. Let's keep it 100. He said to me, <laughs> we're not sleeping together no more. So I said, who's this girl in your church then? Because that doesn't make any sense. So I rolled up to your church mm -hmm. to see who was there. This is true. Mm -hmm. And basically it was, you know, not sleeping, not having sex outside of marriage is what he was referring to. But yeah, sorry. Um, then fast forward a few years later, um, I remember saying, you know, I felt like I was ready to date. Uh, no, I felt like I was ready to get married. 
just because of the age, I, I thought I was mature enough. I'd done what I really wanted to do. And I was like, all right, let me take that step. So I went, um, I asked her friends, you know, what type of ring she would like. But on the day of the proposal, I went to her mum mm. and just said, you know, remember that time I said I was going to marry her? Well, I'm going to propose today. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that didn't go to. It didn't go down well. No, it, no, didn't. it didn't. No, it didn't. But um, end up taking. Yeah, I proposed. I ended up taking her to the restaurant. My plan was to take her to propose on the big wheel. But the time we finished the restaurant and got to the big wheel, the man said it's shut. Went outside of the big wheel, and I got on my knees, and she was like, "Is this a joke?" So the reason why I thought it was a joke is because a month before mm -hmm. we went for a walk in the same place. Yep. And as we were walking, he pretended to get on his knee. And then I got gassed and got excited. And then as he went to get on his knee, he jumped up and said, of course not, and carried on walking. But when he pulled the ring out, I was like, oh, so, you, so like you're serious, serious. And then I looked at the ring and I said, mm-hmm, that's the one that I wanted. Yes, I, yes, yes, I will marry you. <laughs> Even though I think it took nine months from the engagement to the wedding day, yeah. I looked for my dress six weeks before the wedding. Like, I wasn't taking it seriously at all. Because I was like, mm, I'm not even sure this is going to happen. The way that everything was working out. Mm -hmm. um, but once I had my dress on and my hair was done and my makeup was done, I was like, oh, like, this is for real, for real. And I'm not a girly girl. So seeing myself in that way, I was like, oh, I'm about to be someone's wife. Like, this, this is big, big things. Um, and just looking back at it, I don't think I took our wedding day as seriously as I should have. Like, watching back at the videos, whilst we were meant to be, like, lovey-dovey <laughs> in each other's eyes, I was talking to my best friend at the time and like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. No, 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 I should be looking at my husband-to-be and having that intimate, personal moment and that I, d I didn't do that. I don't know. The whole day was just like, this is long. Like, right, let's just get it done. <laughs> let's just, let's be out of this place. Trust. Yeah, it wasn't really a romantic situation, the wedding, to be fair. I understand this now. It's not about the wedding day. Yeah, It's absolutely. about marriage. Like, the wedding is not really for us. The wedding's for people. Mm. We're the one who fork out the money for you to eat three meals. <laughs> drink, drink to you, vomit. <laughs> uh, party or whatever you want to do. The wedding's not for us. What's the one thing that really annoys you about the other one? So, I'm so sorry to blast you on no, this, no yeah. I'm, we're going to be honest. Oh, yeah, we are. Adrian mm -hmm. bites his fingers. Yes, I do. And it really irritates me. Mm -hmm. So, that's one of the small things. Like, he bites his fingers. Like, he'll sit there and he'll just go ham on them. <laughs> and, like, he has no melanin left in the tops of his fingers. So, that really irritates me. But on a deeper level, what can be concerning is that he's really quiet when things get serious. And I'm a person that needs communication. Let's talk about it. Let's argue about it and then put it to bed where Adrian's just like, I need to think about this first. So, yeah. <clears throat> so one of them are, uh, well, when, when she moans, she can moan about how the air is thicker on a day or it could be where if my beard is out of place or I may have my hat in the wrong position. You, you can it's moan. It's not moaning. Well, it's it's, it's my turn, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't interrupt you. Okay. <clears throat> Do you not want to look your no, best? No. Can you put your hand down there? <laughs> it's a moan or a nag. Noted. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate it. No problem. Is there anything deeper for you that just... No, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. That is the moaning. That's deep. Okay. What turns you on most about your I would say, genuinely, Adrian's heart is so big. And at first it was like really cute. Then it became really irritating because I felt like he put people before me just to make sure that they were okay. But seeing your compassion, and I know it's a proper mad cheesy answer, and I promise you, I always said I'll never be this person. <laughs> but seeing you so compassionate and going over and beyond with other people, it really does something for me because I know that you'll do 10 times more for me and they're strangers, so what more will you do for me? Facts. Um, apart from the physical side, I love your voice. Thanks. Yo, that husky thing. Okay. Mad. Yeah. 
Okay. Mad. Mm -hmm. Talking and singing. Okay, okay. It's mad. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Carry on. What's the thing that you love the most about your partner? I love that um, she encourages me. Because <clears throat> I've got the tendency, I'm an overthinker. And if I, I, if I overthink too much, I do do pros and cons with everything. But she's got the tendency to just go, okay, I believe we can do it. Let's just do it. I also love that uh, she loves me, because that helps. Thanks. Um, yeah. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not. I'm joking. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's, it's, I'm joking. it's not. I'll give you that. Your turn. Um, the main thing that I love about Adrian, one of the main things, is that Adrian will go over and beyond for anyone. For anyone. Um, he has this really giving attitude. I remember before we were engaged, I think we had just got back together, and he had £10 in his account. And his friend was like, oh, can you borrow me £10 for petrol? Because I don't have any money. Now, I know that he's got work. So if he gives away that £10, he's walking to work. He gave the £10 to his friend and walked to work. And I was like, what? Why are you doing that? Like, tell him no. Like, he's a big man. He can fend for himself. But Adrian is very, very giving. And I think another thing is Adrian's also very forgiving. So if someone has disrespected him, he just lets it go. It's just like, it's not that deep. It doesn't need to take that much headspace. He's a very forgiving person and can, he's, he can get over things very quickly. The time that I can remember that Adrian really, really hurt me is four years into our marriage, we kind of decided to call it quits. And I was over the relationship, I was over the marriage, I was like, this is long. And even though most marriages are like the honeymoon phase, I don't think we ever experienced that. I mean, the day after we got married, I definitely called my mum and was like, mum, I don't know why I did this kind of thing. And it was just a struggle for the first four years in our marriage. And you'll never know, because I never mentioned it to you, but what really hurt me is that he gave me an ultimatum. And even though I'd already checked out of the marriage, he basically said, um, I can either get behind him and respect him, I can move back to my mum's till December, or we can get a divorce. That agent never given me an ultimatum before. Obviously, I'm very good at quick responses, so I gave him back an ultimatum. But that really, really hurt me because even though I had kind of checked myself out, to hear him give that ultimatum meant that he was checking out too. So there was like a point of no return. Mm. Yeah. We actually ended up going to our church marriage retreat. So every year, um, all the marriages, all the married couples go away. Um, to like Bournemouth or something, just for a couple of days. Um, and that marriage retreat, we actually went away and we didn't speak on the journey up there. We didn't speak whilst we were there. We didn't speak when we left. Um, and I'd kind of spoken to one of my pastors and I was just like, look, I'm over it. Like I'm done, I don't want this marriage anymore. Um, but when we got back, I would wake up in the morning at like four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning with his hand like on my head or on my arm and he'd be praying over me and I'd be like stop touching me like why are you touching me you hypocrite don't touch me um and all of a sudden I don't know after like the the second week I'm like okay I can't be bothered to fight you anymore I can't even bother to argue if you want to pray for me do your thing but I'm not on it um and I definitely say it's his prayers that changed this if if you didn't do that we wouldn't be here mm. yeah so when I became a Christian and I went to my pastor, I said, look, I want to date, I want to get married, I feel this time. Just before we dated, she, she was going to uni. I just started to go to uni. Just, go, just started going to uni, but she was going in Bristol. So she moved up there. The people that she moved in with were people that I went to college with, so I knew them. Um, while she was up there, she was engaging in things that they were engaging in. So she was smoking, drinking, doing Not because this. of them though. No, yeah. I'm saying she was doing that. So when I found out, I'm thinking, this is mad because I'm saying that's not my lifestyle. I don't live like that no more. So how can I get married? And for her, I'm saying that you are the most, you're the person I'm putting my trust in. I've known you far longer than most people in the church. So for me to go on a limb and say, I'm going to, I want to marry you. So we need to date and we need to do this. And you've kind of just upped and left and done your thing. But for I think me, it's the fact that I didn't tell you, you found out. Yeah, yeah, of course. That, like it, that, it was a betrayal. I felt like, I felt, yeah, I just felt betrayed. And at that time, I didn't really know what to do. I was just like, no, nah, this is dead, man. 
this whole thing, I just feel like I've been lied to. Um, how important is sex? Say that again. In, in maintaining a successful relationship. <laughs> Go on. How important yes, is it? It's, it's very important. The Bible says none. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> big man. No, I mean, sex is there. It's, it's, it's created for people to have a deeper connection. So I think you need it in order to keep a relationship. Mm. Um, yeah, and have as much as you can. Mm. Yeah, I agree. It's very important. I think, you know, we should remember that sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think, let me speak for myself, it's easy for me to be like, oh, I'm good. But you don't realise how important it is to the relationship. Yeah. Why is it important that there is representation of the mainstream of black couples? I think it's important for black couples to be, to have a strong representation in the media because I want to be able to see that I can do the same thing. Um, I think traditionally speaking, normally black couples is single mom or the dad's running about on the mom and there's a baby father and a baby mom and that's how it's kind of represented in the media i don't know about the uk but in the us that's what is that's what i watch in it but i think it's important because there are successful black relationships there are successful black marriages and um i wish that i was able to see that when i was younger because I didn't see it at home and I didn't see it in the media. I only saw Home and Away and Neighbours and EastEnders and there was no representation of that for me. So it wasn't anything to strive for or anything to be like, no, I can work this one out. People need to have a vision of what, pe what you can be. So like Meghan Markle, she married into the royal family. Barack Obama became the president. It's like. If I'm a young black man, I know that I can aspire for greatness if I see it. Mm. A lot of people think, you know, sports and music are the only way. But there are loads of ways to make money. There's loads of ways. Just like you see, when I was growing up, uh, black couples, we would see were like my wife and kids. Yeah. And that's a sick, that was like a, for me, I was like, oh my days. That's that is how a, I want to be. That's how I want to be. Um, before my, my generation, it was the Cosbys. You, thought, you saw a successful family. But um, now I believe it needs to be more than just a show. It needs to be, there are real people going through real struggles, but also real successes. Um, us, we, we got married young. Mm. We've been married nearly eight years. We're Christian. Um, we have good morals. We've been through it. We've been through things from nearly getting divorced. We've gone through infertility issues. We've gone through a miscarriage. We've gone through uh losing our home we've gone through losing our car losing our car the car blowing up car. we've gone through things so i i believe that people need to see that there's always light at the end of the tunnel there's always yeah. hope because we've gone through it and we're still here yeah um like let's say like depression i think depression is like a tunnel that you can't see the end of but all you need to know is that there is light at the end of that tunnel Love doesn't have to be a losing game. Every single thing can happen. Change is coming, go. But that's the way love goes.